Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and uh, we're winding up here, but uh, we, you know, this, our guests are still streaming in, and uh, you know, we, we hate turning people away. It's, uh, it's just such great content and really good action going on here at VMworld. We're down in the hang space, so by all means, stop by and see us. You know, uh, we're, we're running out of time, but we'll try to squeeze you in. And uh, I'm here with Jeff Eccles, who's with Commvault. Um, and Jeff is uh, Senior Director of Product Marketing. Uh, a lot going on, Jeff, in the backup space. Uh, for, first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Yeah, we've been talking all week about um, you know, how virtualization's been stressing these you know, various systems, not only storage you know, generally, but backup specifically. And um, we had a segment on backup, we had Jason Buffington on, uh, he was talking about how, um, you know, how virtualization's been very disruptive you know, yeah. to the whole backup business. So what are the big trends you see in uh, data protection? Yeah. Specifically as it relates to virtualized environments. No problem, VMware. no problem. Yeah, virtualization definitely added, uh, I did a lot of good things obviously on the, uh, on the server side in terms of cost savings. Um, it did add a layer of complexity there, to your point, on the data management side. And so uh, it's actually, you know, from our perspective, it's been a good thing for us because um, I anything that's kind of a, a big change like that forces change across the uh, organization. And, uh, and that's when we're able to kind of come in and tell our, our story about uh, you know, kind of holistic management, single pane of glass, all that good stuff. And so virtualization did that. Um, but you're exactly right. What we're seeing now is that people are starting to move applications uh, rapidly into, uh, into VMware. And uh, that, that creates a lot more uh, complexity around uh, being able to tie application data down to that storage layer and then protect it. Uh, and so the big trends we're seeing, uh, again, we're kind of focused on, on mid to larger organizations, is leveraging hardware snapshots on storage arrays uh, to actually uh, protect those data stores that are running VMs. And that's a, that's a hot topic for us right now. Yeah, so uh, Commvault, obviously a uh, major player in the, the backup software business. Um, and there's a lot of shifts going on yeah. there. Um, you're seeing, um, you know, obviously data deduplication was a, was a big disruptor and, and in a good way. Yeah. You know, it really drove, uh, you know, the, the disk-based backup uh, opportunity. You're also seeing snapshots come in. Uh, you guys have a very strong relationship, I know, with NetApp. Right. Uh, and are driving that, that vision. Um, so how do you see the progression of the way in which we are, are doing backups evolving? How is that changing? Well, what's changing is um, we believe snapshots are going to be a fundamental uh, piece of the equation because people, uh, especially as uh, server I.O. is more and more stressed, um, uh, there's not enough time to stream a backup uh, off, of a, off of a physical server, and so people are going to have to start using uh, hardware snapshots uh, on, on arrays like EMC arrays or NetApp arrays or, or any, you know, we support 17 different arrays today. Um, but being able to use that snapshot to rapidly um, coerce the data stores uh, and then kind of come in and mount that snapshot off from the side and actually um, you know, catalog the, that snapshot, be able to pull particular snapshots off uh, for backup, but be able to do it in such a way that you're not stressing that, that primary ESX uh, server. And uh, I think the traditional methods that we, we kind of have used as an industry in the past are no longer going to work. You got to start with a snapshot to get that, that quick uh, capture of data, leveraging that, that silicon on, the, on that array, um, and then start pulling it off to the side. And in some cases, moving it off the array is going to leverage uh, that hardware replication built in, such as, such as a NetApp replication, SnapVault, SnapMirror, or it's going to be um, uh, kind of deduplicating it uh, off, off host and, and uh, sending that off to secondary storage. Uh, it's going to kind of vary there, but uh, you're definitely going to see more snap and more replication in the future. The, um, the, the VMware contribution to backup has evolved yes. uh, over the years. Um, you know, you remember VCB, uh, the sort of failed experiment. And, uh, but okay, it's you know, yeah. a 1.0, uh, and then obviously VADP um, has had a big impact. Uh, basically, right. you know, the VMware API for data protection. Uh, VMware put it out there and said, okay, ecosystem, <laughs> you go solve this right, problem. Right. And that was good, because you guys know what you're doing, right? So, right. And everybody hopped on that, and, and that's made some good stuff, particularly with change block tracking, you know, being right. able to take advantage of that. Uh, and then, of course, you had VDR, the sort of low-end, entry-level freebie with vSphere 5, and now that's replaced by VDP. Um, Chuck Hollis came up with a blog talking about mm -hmm. how that's based on Avamar. Everybody kind of knows that. Everybody knew it was coming. But essentially said, you guys would be quaking in your boots. Um, what's your point of view, so on the record, what's your point of sure. view on VDP? Are you quaking in your boots? Is this, uh, sure. you know, are you guys changing your business strategy as a result of this? Um, is it business as usual? 
No changes from our perspective. Um, I, I think it's an interesting play. I think that that play is going to uh, open up uh, some, some SMB shops that are moving uh, applications into VMware. We see that as, uh, as kind of a fundamental step in, uh, in having some protection built in there uh, for, for smaller shops or, or uh, shops that are moving applications into VM and need to have a backup story as, as part of it. I think it makes a lot of strategic sense for those guys to kind of go that direction. Uh, as far as uh, the environments that we sell into, um, that packaging is not going to be something that, our, that those customers are going to be interested in. Um, having a, a, two ter a two terabyte limit uh, and running it inside of ESX, enterprise shops are not going to want to have backup data um, kind of living in, in ESX. Um, and they're generally going to, they're going to have more than two terabytes, right? So a lot of those guys are, uh, are still going to be in a different class of, of solution. They're going to be looking for uh, something, you know, in the, in the dozens to hundreds of, of terabytes, um, maybe even bigger than that in a lot of cases. Uh, so they're going to want it coming off of, off of ESX. They're going to want to live it on, on, on lower cost storage media. Um, and they're going to need uh, uh, a lot more than a couple of terabytes. So that you're basically sense. saying you're trying to solve a bigger problem. We're solving a bigger problem. That's solves. exactly right. Um, let me let me counter though. Is, okay. Are you concerned that you know the the low end gets bigger and, and goes up market? Do you feel like the market that VDP targets that freemium model can only go so high? I think it only goes so high. I think that uh, uh, I think that uh, there's a class of customer out there that's okay with backups living inside of ESX. Uh, but the, at some point in time, you want backups coming off of a server, right? You don't want them all living in that server, and you don't want them all living on primary storage, which, as you know, can be costly, right? Um, so at, at some point, when you get into uh, you know dozens, hundreds, thousands of terabytes, um, you got to be pulling it off of off of that server and going going off host with it, and you need to be in the uh, in the hundreds or thousands of, of terabytes kind of scale. Uh, that's our position on it. So uh, you know, that, I think that'll. You don't have a freemium model. We don't have a freemium model. <laughs> yeah, right. no, it's not, not, not launching one anytime soon, right? <laughs> no well, plans. You know, we had Veeam on earlier, and uh, obviously this goes more head to head with uh, a Veeam. Absolutely. Um, at the same time, they have a freemium model. Um, they weren't quaking in their boots either. I don't expect they would. I mean, they're a good competitor. Uh, the market's uh, robust. Right. Um, so it's like we love the competition and the disruption. <laughs> I want to come back to the to the snapshots because we. Okay. In 2010, we put forth this notion of the, the time machine for the enterprise, we called it, right. using you know, the, the, the idea of Apple's time machine as a way to back up using snapshots and, and continuous data protection to dial up and dial down your, um, your RPO. And um, it's starting to take shape. We're really pleased to see that happening, and it's really attacked the, the sort of uh, the backup window problem. Right. Talk about how customers are actually using that, deploying yeah. that, and what the impact is on their, their business. Yeah, yeah, so um, you know, specific to VM, you mentioned VADP a second ago, and you're right, we all had to work off of VADP um, uh, to kind of make backups work. Uh, getting back to kind of those, those bigger environments, what we, st we, what we started to see you know, in the last, I'd say six to 12 months, is aggressive virtualization adoption starts occurring in bigger shops, applications start moving in. Um, using VADP without those hardware snapshots, uh, it, it, can create, it can create some problems in those larger shops, because what happens is you go to kind of quiesce uh, that data store, and you got to wait for all those VMs to stop before you can do that, uh, that software snapshot with VADP. Uh, you could be talking about 20, 30, 40 minutes um, for all those VMs to stop running, so you can do your quiesce and, your, and your, you take your, your VADP snapshot, uh, and then you release it, right? You, then you got to let that log play back, right? There's been logs kind of building up while you've been waiting for that, that data store to stop. Uh, that's where you start to see some issues. At times you could see some orphan snapshots, you could see connection get lost uh, during the log playback and stuff would, would, would kind of fail there. Uh, you kind of, now you enter the, enter the hardware snapshot game. When you go in to do uh, something like that with, with Commvault with VADP, we're going to trigger that hardware snapshot. Uh, so you, now you're talking about uh, quiescing and snapping that store in a matter of seconds, maybe minutes. So your transaction buildup is much, much smaller when you're talking about using a hardware snapshot model. And so for an enterprise customer, that can be pretty significant if, if they're dealing with things like orphan snapshots or they're trying to get into the hundreds or thousands of VMs. Um, you really want to kind of be there uh, with, with a hardware snapshot. And the reason you want to quiesce in the first place, by the way, uh, is to get that application consistency in that VM. That's um, a, yeah, data consistency yeah. issue. If you're moving apps in, that, that's going to be a critical piece of the story. Okay, so the idea is you take that snap, it's on site now. As you know, most of the, the recoveries are for relatively fresh data. All right, so what do I do with that data? I leave it there. Uh, for some period of time, I know best practices, day, week, yep. you know, 10 days, whatever it is, whatever your, your policy is. And then, I got to get it off site, right? Because my, I have an RPO 
whatever my RPO definition is, I got to get it off-site. What, what are you recommending there, uh, and where does dedupe fit in? Yeah, that, that's, this, is a, this is a great question. So, uh, we're seeing, you know, the, the bigger shops are going to create multiple snapshots during the day. Um, I think you're going to see, uh, you know, an average of may maybe, maybe four to five snapshots a day, depending on the application, that they can revert back to. Uh, if they need, they have some kind of corruption in exchange, or whatever it may be, you want to fall back to a snapshot. With Commvault, that's kind of a right click, fail back to that revert, you're up and running, we'll play the logs back, you're, you're good to go. Uh, generally, those, those folks will take one of those snapshots and they'll pull it off for a backup. They'll mount that snapshot from a proxy, so they're not going to hit that ESX server again. They'll mount it from a proxy, they'll, they'll, they'll run that backup job to uh, another storage target in the environment. Now, what we're starting to see from a disaster recovery standpoint that's interesting with cloud is we're, we're seeing people that are starting to uh, replicate that data out into a, a infrastructure as a service. Uh, an example could be Microsoft Azure. So I replicate that data that lands in Microsoft Azure. It's deduplicated, it's encrypted. Uh, it's sitting out there in cloud now. Uh, in the event I have a disaster at my site, I now have the ability to come in, fire up a VM over there in the cloud, mount that last backup copy, recover that thing, uh, and I'm, I'm off to the races, right? I re reworked my network, and um, now I've got a uh, very affordable disaster recovery leveraging cloud, cloud infrastructure. So now obviously not deduping the on-site snap. Uh, well, once we, once we back up from that snap, we would dedupe at that and then, point, and, and we would keep it deduped all the way out to the cloud. So that, but that first snap is, is undeduped, correct? That's correct, yeah, it's okay. native, native so, files. So yep. I don't have to rehydrate it, um, and then whenever I back up that snap, that's when I, 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 I dedupe. That's right. Go into either a, 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 t a target or the cloud. That's, That's right. We've probably seen people do both. They'll, they'll want to dedupe to a local target in case they need to get a backup back fast. And then they'll create a, another a dedupe copy that lands out there in cloud. And then that data out there, I can, I can fire that up into a VM in the event I have a disaster. Okay, so I got that. And I may even take it off, uh, off disk and get it off the tape. Right, Just retention, yeah, somewhere. you may have compliance reasons where you got to keep certain data and for. You guys, what, what's your tape integration strategy? Uh, we've got, uh, we, that's where we come from, that's our history, right? right? So, so. You, you name it, we got it on the tape side, right? people are ca catching up to you there, it's really right, sort of right. Good. And then, did you see, I'm sure you did, uh, Amazon Glacier? I did see that. Yeah, uh, so if you were CIO, would you put your data in Amazon Glacier? Um, I, absolutely, if it's the right kind of data. I mean, it uh, depends on what the data is. I think, uh, I think one cent a gigabyte is very compelling. Uh, we see a lot of CIOs right now that are, uh, that are, are looking for affordable um, infrastructure that's not tape, uh, and, and cloud storage in many cases is it. So um, one, si one cent is pretty compelling, uh, and so we're, I, think it, I think that's going to well, be a game changer. Well, it's cheap to get it in, but to get it out, we're not sure yet, right? <laughs> exactly. So be careful yeah. of that. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> that's right. All right, Jeff, uh, we're out of time. Listen, thanks very much for stopping by. I know it was on short notice, so really great to see you again. Thank you, appreciate, appreciate you it. sharing your perspectives with our audience. No problem. All right, this is Dave Vellante, and uh, this, we're going to wrap up shortly from here from uh, VMworld 2012. My colleague, John Furrier, will be back to wrap up. So keep it right there, and we'll talk to you in a minute.